Creating a keyed property is as simple as building up an animation and then using a tool called ERC Freeze to convert that animation into a property. So I'll just do an animation really quick here. Uh, let's go ahead to frame 5 and just dial up Geo Body. We're going to do a nice simple animation where over a 10 frame period a morph, each morph in succession will dial up and dial back down. So, just to make sure Olympia doesn't start turning on until after Gia starts turning off, we'll go back. Now, next, Olympia is going to turn off. And Josie will turn on. And I'll just keep repeating this. five frames at a time. Of course it doesn't really matter what you're going to do but since a keyed property is essentially an animation tied to a single property then it just makes sense that what we do is just use the timeline itself to animate everything. So you could use any other animation tools available to you. I'm just using the timeline for kicks but you could even have a full body animation if you wanted and tie it to a property. So now we have an animation here that's just going through the various morphs one at a time. Okay. And what we need to do is go into edit mode in the parameters tab. So I'm already in edit mode. And let's go ahead and just create our property right now. So I'm in the actor group and I'm going to create a new property and I'll just call this morph animation and I'm going to give it a type so it still sh does show up in the shaping tab and I'm going to set my minimum to zero maximum to one you can actually set that to anything it could be zero to one, zero to 100 doesn't really matter. In this case, I'll just leave it at 1 for fun. And say create. And now I've got this empty morph. It doesn't do anything. But if you right click on it, go ERC freeze, pops up this dialog, populates the property with this new property you created, and do keyed. And it's, it says it's going to extract from the play range. So what it's going to do is it's going to take this play range, whatever my play range was, and my play range is 0 to 30. And that 0 is going to be equivalent to the 0 on my, on my property over here. And the 30 is going to be equivalent to 1 on my property here. So it's basically going to take the whole play range that we've already set up and squeeze that into a morph dial or a property. And so if I just hit accept and then grab this morph and dial it through, you can see it's spinning up each of these morphs. And so now I have an animation all in one property. And it's that easy.